Welcome to the Lee Schools TV December podcast. I am Superintendent Dr. Ken Savage, and I'm so excited to be your host for today's discussion. Our guests today are Dunbar High School senior Carson Mulvey and his math teacher and coach, Phil Savage. Full disclosure, Phil is my brother. And as I said when I interviewed for this podcast back in August, my brothers, my wife, almost my entire family, we all work for the school district because we're all committed to education. Carson is quite the student. He just finished second in the world in the Microsoft Office Specialist World Online Championship in PowerPoint 2016. He's on the, one of the top ranked high school math teams in the state and recently received a perfect score on the AP exam for computer science principles. Carson, let's start with you. Uh, congratulations on all your success. Uh, let's talk first about the Microsoft World Championships. You were a state champion with a perfect score before finishing second in the world. Describe for us the competition and, and what it is that you do. All right, yeah, so uh, as you may think, the Microsoft competition is about mastery of the Microsoft Office programs. Uh, and this is in all aspects. So uh, for the state round, uh, in order to advance, you have to focus on uh, accuracy and speed. Uh, and it's all about the uh, Microsoft Office exam. So uh, for me particularly, um, I repeated this, this um, certification exam uh, for the Microsoft Office uh, programs, for, one for uh, each of the programs throughout different years. So that's Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. Um, and the idea was to work on speed as much as possible in the program. Uh, and so for this 60-minute uh, uh, industry certification exam, uh, in the end, I ended up uh, working the time down to four minutes for these exams on average. So um, it's all about a lot of speed at the initial rounds. Uh, and then when you get up to the world championship, uh, which you have to qualify for through the previous rounds, um, then it turns into more about being able to actually apply it. So for example, uh, this year I had a multiple choice exam uh, as well as a three hour project. And since I competed in uh, PowerPoint 2016, uh, I made a PowerPoint presentation and I had three hours to do so, uh, along with all the knowledge of the program and you have to uh, not just be able to use the program, but really know all the details, know all the advanced features. Uh, and it's about knowing all of that and applying that in that exam and then using it all in that project as well in sufficient time. Wow, how do you train for something like that? So a lot of it is just uh, making a lot of projects and working with the program a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and specifically with the speed aspect, um, there's, there's a repetition aspect to it. It's a lot of doing the same tasks. Mm -hmm. uh, and throughout that process, uh, what often happens uh, is you'll, you'll know something you have to do and then you'll automatically just know, you know, this is where it is, this is the keys I have to press. Um, and part of it's also learning uh, some shortcuts as well. Uh, so for example, um, if I want to add something to my presentation, uh, but I want to do it as fast as possible. Uh, some of the things that I learned, for example, was um, not to use the mouse as much, uh, and then just pressing the keyboard buttons um, and making it even faster. Like hotkeys um, and yeah, like exactly, the control. Exactly, yeah, wow. exactly, exactly. That's awesome. Um, it, because it, it is slower to use um, the application if you're moving the mouse around, and it has to be precise with that. Um, but by learning the exact you know, keyboard combinations to complete certain tasks, it makes it even faster and you can just breeze through um, everyday things. And it makes that for complex tasks, you can also do them really fast. So well, that's, that's pretty amazing. And I'll tell you what, if I ever need some help with PowerPoint, I know who to come to, yeah. especially the hardest features. Uh, right. Let's shift gears to the AP Computer Science. So right. this AP exam for computer science, you were one of only 355 students in the entire world to get a perfect score. Did you have any idea after taking the test how well you had actually done? No, I didn't know. I definitely didn't know um, because, well, that's not the sort of thing that I'm thinking of when going in for, for a uh, AP exam because it, the, the purpose of it is just to test um, that I know enough about uh, computer science. So I was thinking about, um, I, I thought I had done well, but I didn't, I didn't think that I had answered everything correctly. Um, and of course, I, I've been doing a lot of uh, 
practice projects in uh, programming and computer science, and I had done a lot of studying, but I, I really didn't expect it because maybe I could have made some mistakes here and there, um, but it's, I guess, about becoming really comfortable with it. Uh, but I definitely didn't expect it, that, that, that's for sure, because um, that's not something I think of. You know, um, typically I think about the AP, uh, AP score scale from one to five. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wasn't thinking about, uh, I was thinking about, you know, I, I have to get a five on this. Trying not to get a high, yeah, not, high not, score. Not, it wasn't about, <laughs> I, I didn't think, go out thinking, oh, I know I got everything right, yeah. because it's definitely easy to make mistakes. So. Um, I'm glad that I was able to get pretty consistent with it. That's incredible. Now, so what made you get interested in computer technology in the first place? So a lot of it, um, a lot of the programming things I started from um, a long time ago. Um, as w when I was younger, I would do a lot of uh, different programming. Mostly I was, I was doing things uh, with just video games at first. You know, I was making things for video games using uh, programming within the game, uh, things like that. And what it eventually evolved into was programming, and it was a, a lot more practical after that, of course. Um, so starting around the beginning of high school, I started learning um, programming, starting with uh, Python. A and what happened was um, I, I had worked with um, programming, uh, specifically with um, like a actual, actually used uh, programming languages, uh, multiple years before I got into the AP Computer Science Principles class. So I had a lot of experience going in, and so I was definitely more confident. Um, but it, it started with an interest in the logic behind it. Um, and at first, I was using it to apply to just, just games, as I said, uh, and it turned to being something that I could apply to a lot, other, a lot of other things that I'm interested in, um, because a lot of the programs you can make can have um, a lot of real world you know, applications. So, Well, let's talk about some of those other interests that you have, and certainly ones with logic as a pretty big part. So Dunbar's math team, yeah. they're currently ranked seventh in the nation. And for those that don't know, you know, help them understand what is a math team competition like? So with a math team competition, a lot of it is um, about uh, understanding complex math, uh, but also general problem solving. Um, so you can't, you can't um, become a top student in the nation uh, in a math competition uh, just by memorizing um, or through repetition. It's a lot about developing a certain mindset. You have to learn how to problem solve a certain way and you have to become very comfortable um, thinking in a completely different way in order to, to solve different problems. Uh, but and then in actual competition, you apply that problem solving mindset uh, and you use it to solve difficult math, math problems. And uh, usually in the competitions themselves, you have individual uh, competitions, uh, which are just math examinations and you have a, a limited amount of time to complete it. Uh, and there's also team competitions as well, where you work with teammates to uh, solve solve math problems together as well. So, oh, that's wonderful. And uh, you know, Phil, you know, you're a math coach, so I want to bring you into this conversation. You know, students in your program, it's no exaggeration to say they're getting an Ivy League style of education. Some getting full scholarships to schools like MIT and others. How do you do it? Well, you know, my background, I, I grew up in Lee County. I went to school here, and, and I, I know being involved in some of these programs, I, when I was a student, I got destroyed in these events. I, I still remember not even, at, not even touching the, the bar that these kids are hitting. And I, I, back then, I wondered, how, how do they do it? And, and what I realized is that the bar that we set, we need to raise the bar for our kids. And, and so what I, what I did as a teacher is I didn't want my students to go through the same kind of trouble that I had where you go and you just get outclassed by these by these students and and because uh, we've got some amazing kids with amazing minds and, and just they're great like just listening to him you can't be anything but proud but uh, what I realized is you look at the elite level the best of the best and you start to see what do they do how do they train how do they practice um, what type of activities are they needing to execute um, and I just try to expose my students to those bars um, and and let give them the tools give them the kind of the lens to see what they could be what they sh what what's possible for them and the uh, when we connect it's it's amazing what they can do and accomplish you know, tell me you know how does Carson make you a better teacher well I, I think that a lot of a lot of teachers like good students hard workers people that care 
Um, but I think what, what's really impressive about the best of the best, when you're dealing with these elite level talents, these elite level minds, is that it forces you as a teacher to always have more for them to do. You're, you, it's very easy to just say, oh, go, go uh, look online or something like that or do a project or present. But what I really am always trying to do is I'm trying to constantly find where you're at, what can I do to make you better, what, what's out there. Um, and, and it's forced me to learn things that, that, I, that I have. And I used to, back when I first started this, uh, we would have these speed and mental math competitions. And, and I, I mean, I, my background, I, I was a civil engineer, so I'm pretty good at math. Um, and uh, it, at the time, I was always able to beat these kids. But now, I'm having to learn shortcuts. And, and even when I know the shortcuts, uh, they're, they're still able to do it faster and more efficiently than me. And so that's the thing. When you're around such great minds, it, it forces you to grow. And I think that having that mindset of constantly growing yourself, it helps model that for the kids as well. So. Well, Carson, so, so how does your math teacher make you a better student or even a better person? Well, I think a lot of it um, is not just about uh, directly teaching, but more about um, giving, providing the tools um, to help uh, improve myself. Um, so, for example, um, the infrastructure that the uh, math team and competing in math team has been for me has helped me so much with improving in math. Um, I, I, it's, it's crazy how much I, how much math I learned uh, through the math team program um, because I, I've always been interested in, in learning more math, but um, it was with Mr. Savage especially that I felt like I had uh, the, the infrastructure and the tools in order to become a lot better. I, I knew this is what I need to learn and also this is how I can learn more on my own um, because I know um, for me, uh, especially with, with um, the past few years, um, and I was uh, learning online last year, um, I've, I've had to do self-learning as well. Um, but I feel like Mr. Savage uh, has given the tools in order to help me uh, learn on my own as well. And I feel like it's helped um, me to understand how I can be a better learner, uh, how I can teach myself uh, further math, and how I can keep on improving as well. That's wonderful. Now, how would you both describe the partnership that you have? Well, you know, I, I look at Carson almost, a, when I first became a teacher, uh, I was a, um, a, just a young graduate of college, didn't really have much vision for my life. And I, I look at all my students almost like little, little brothers or things like that. It's, it's a partnership. It's, it's like I, I know personally, I just... I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of all that he accomplishes, and and watching the impact that he makes on kids, it's it's like a again like a proud older brother, or even like a, a I would say more like a brother than a dad. But um, again, it's that's. But what what would you say, Carson? Well, um, I actually have I think a story for this, uh, and I don't know if Mr. Savage knows this, um, but I. Um, so at Dunbar High School, we um, often host uh, middle school competitions for Lee County. Uh, and the very first one that I competed in, I was in sixth grade, um, and I felt uh, somewhat confident going in, um, even though I, I didn't have really too much infrastructure um, for, for preparing for the competitions. I didn't really know too much what to expect. It was my first um, really big um, like math competition and so I went in and I, I took that test and I did really bad on it. Uh, I completely ran out of time. I got like halfway through it um, and I just completely failed it and I really overestimated what my skills were. Um, and you know being uh, a sixth grader I got back and I was just devastated. Um, I remember um, I started to cry and I started I, I ran out of the room, um, and then um, I was starting to, I was just letting it out because really um, my expectations for, for myself, I didn't, I didn't know very much back then. I didn't, I didn't know what the competitive world was like. I didn't know how, how I could um, improve in math and, and become a good competitor. Um, but I do remember Mr. Savage uh, approaching me in that moment, um, and uh, he was uh, telling me that he had uh, hope for me, and that I need that uh, he hopes that he could work with me um, in the future. And um, 
I, I just remember that. That was, that was a, a long time ago and uh, almost uh, blurry at this point, but I definitely um, remember that experience a lot. And uh, th I think that was like the first interaction that I had <laughs> with him. Uh, um, and, and after that, um, things really started picking up um, around, or a little before high school started. Um, we had a summer program and I started to learn there and it really, uh, boosted my, my math uh, skills a lot, and it really started developing, developing things a lot. And so um, I think just because of everything, um, the, the relationship, I, I don't know if I could give a word for it, um, but it's definitely something exceptional. Um, it's definitely uh, different from how most people would view a, a teacher-student relationship, for sure. Well, and Phil, I want you to describe the impact that Carson has had on you. Carson is a special individual. I, I knew his brother because um, uh, I worked with, worked, it's, it's funny, full circle. And I remember years ago back in open house, um, I, was talk, I was excited with the opportunity to one day work with him because um, talking to his mom and so forth. And, and Carson, it, it's, I think for me, this is why I, I, when I think about my own life, I've had a lot, a lot of different opportunities. Again, my, my, as I said, my background's in civil engineering. Um, and working with like a kid like Carson, it makes it all worth it. Okay, just that's, that's really the, it's the fact that I can give you even anything that can help open up some of the doors and give you, give you some of the, the support that um, a, a student like yourself desperately needs, I think to really just help open those doors. And, and it's so, like it, it's like the, the reason for me waking up in the morning. And I think seeing you inspires me every day to keep regardless of how hard it is, because this has been a hard year for, for, I know many of us, but just these, these experiences and seeing what an impact it can make, um, it, it's, it's, it's inspirational as a teacher. And, and, it, and I, I hope that every, I've had the luxury of seeing you blossom over the course of many years. And again, I knew of you back in sixth grade, all the way now, and although we didn't really work together much until eighth, or the, going into ninth grade, mm -hmm. Um, but it's most teachers don't get this opportunity to just see the the impact that you can make and and again you're you're a kid that is I'm never gonna forget I'm always gonna and and has motivated me to keep doing what I'm doing so mm -hmm. hey, Carson what is it that makes for that successful teacher student partnership so I mean, you have, have talked about your relationship but but if we want to help other people understand how do you get that special magic between students and their teachers what does that look like I think it starts with um, really the communication is super important. You have to be open, I think. Um, you have to have a mutual understanding um, of, well, what the student needs and, and uh, also what the teacher could do about it. Um, and it helps a lot just to be open in your communication um, and, and just really make sure that everything's being, being conveyed um, that needs to be to your teachers so that they accurately know what it is you need to improve yourself. Um, and I think um, if the communication was, was like that more often, um, then with um, teachers, with all, with all sorts of teachers, we could, um, they could have a better understanding of what it exactly is uh, that students need and they can plan accordingly to that. So it's about um, like a feedback loop, right? Like mm -hmm. the, the student really needs to give exactly what, what it is they need. They have to communicate it precisely and they have to be willing to communicate it as well, which I think is, that's one of the difficult parts mm -hmm. is um, approaching teachers and willing to have that kind of communication um, because it, it can definitely be difficult um, considering how you're, um, you know, one's a student and one's uh, an adult, right? J just that much makes it um, definitely a barrier at first in communication, but if you really do break that barrier, then it can help a lot with a mutual understanding. So let's look ahead. You're, you know, Carson, you're graduating in June. So right. what's next and where do you see yourself going? So uh, I'm looking into computer science now um, just because of all of the programming computer science experience I have. So uh, my plan is to major in computer science uh, and right now um, I am applying to uh, some of the top computer science schools uh, in the nation. So um, I've applied, for example, to UC Berkeley and I'm looking at MIT, uh, Harvard, Stanford. 
Um, and within the state, I'm also applying to uh, UCF and UF. And really where I go from here just depends on what I get into and what, it exact, what exactly it is that I'm looking for. So um, I, I hope for in the future to figure out some more specifics about that. Um, but really, um, I enjoy so much all of the computer science stuff, some of the theoretical things with math and, and all of that stuff. Uh, so my, my intention is to, is to go there Work in that direction. That That's incredible. Well, I just want to thank you both so much for joining me for this conversation today. You know, uh, just as we think about the power in our district of these relationships that can be formed where students and teachers come together, uh, when you have this type of magic relationship, we can achieve anything. And it's just so wonderful to see that you are, are now getting to have um, the authorship over your own life to be able to do exactly what you want to do, that you will have a chance to go to any of these incredible universities and pursue you know, the destiny that you've, you've sought for yourself, but that you were supported along the way, not just by your teacher, but by your family. So Carson, what a privilege to get to hear some of your tremendous achievements. And Phil, you know, I, I get to see you as a family member all the time, but I, I know one of the passions you've had as a teacher is to try to help lift up some of our really high performing students who just give them the opportunity to access to achieve whatever it is they want to do. So thank you both for joining me for today. And I just want to hope for our listeners to stay tuned in January for the next edition of the Lee Schools TV podcast. <laughs>